further ado, I'll get started. Again, the subject is part of the place. So a little background on um, what we're looking at here is um, the idea of public gathering spaces. Um, as we said here, a legacy of, of Boston. Um, you know, we have the public garden, we have the Boston Common. These are, these are public gathering spaces that are all known in the city. Um, but they're not limited to just green spaces like those parks that, uh, that you see. There's um, other examples um, worldwide of the public gathering spaces. Here's Times Square in New York. Um, here's a, um, around the world, uh, in Denmark. This is a, what they call a play street where um, it's outside of a school and they put a section of street where they have uh, ping pong tables, a whole foosball table, and just a place where kids can have activities right out in, in the street. Um, here, you may recognize this, obviously in the city, uh, right up front of the uh, old state house um, is uh, Boston Massacre site, again, another public gathering space. And right here in uh, Downtown Crossing, another public gathering space, people can go and, and you know, go to a food cart or go to the market over here during the day and uh, have their lunch and hang out. Uh, so the uses of these, these public areas, um, as, as I mentioned, it could be uh, many, but uh, marketplaces, um, areas for public performances. Um, you know, people can do street performances, with instruments, and everything. Um, street cafes, and also uh, food truck locations like Elton City Hall Plaza, and uh, things of that nature. So, um, what we've sort of coined this term as is uh, these public commons and neighborhoods as, as neighborhood commons sort of initiative that uh, Public Works is uh, taking on right now in order to sort of reclaim these, these spaces um, and, and turn them into a, a, a public space that people can, can utilize. So that brings our attention to, uh, to Bartlett Place while you're all here. You see what's going on over there. So as you know, this is Salem Street uh, coming across here, and then we're looking inward at, at uh, Bartlett Place as it stands right now. Uh, I apologize for the quality of the projector, but uh, take my word for it. It's fine. Yeah. Um, so, the city's going to come in, and um, I believe we're, we're planning on doing some work on um, resurfacing uh, Salem Street in the, in the near future. And as part of our work, what we want to do is, uh, is do some uh, repairs to the Bartlett Place area, mainly um, making this. Uh, a flush sidewalk across with a, with a driveway entrance so it can still be accessible to vehicles, but also doing some sort of um, delineation to cordon this, this area off. Right now we're showing some, some bollards and just to, uh, to delineate that, that space. So this way it'll be more accessible to pedestrians, people in wheelchairs and everything, because right now there's no pedestrian ramps or accessibility and just make a nice crossing across there. However, um, when, now we've created, we have this new space, and it's an opportunity for an enhanced public space, a sort of neighborhood common um, type feel. So, um, in this uh, in this location, there are some design challenges that we need to consider. Uh, first of all, what what is the public space versus the private space? The public works department can only um, construct projects within the public right. So we need to figure out what exactly that is, which we'll go over. Um, what materials? What are we going to use to, to build this uh, this new neighborhood common uh, plaza space? 
Um, drainage obviously is a concern. We want to make sure that drains and the water is flowing into the buildings around and all that stuff. Accessibility, making sure that it's easy to get into, people in wheelchairs can access it, accessible to all. And then what ultimately to put in, in the new space that, uh, that we're creating. So, the first challenge, um, public space versus private space. So right here, if we take a look, this is uh, Salem Street. This is uh, looking down from the sky. This is an old plan we dug up in the basement. So here's Salem Street here, and here's Bartlett Place. And uh, if we look at this, this whole the wide section that you see is all the, uh, the public space. And back here, um, the extension of Bartlett Place going, going further into the alley, like uh, then the more narrow section is, uh, is a private way. Um, so what we'd be doing essentially is dividing up that public space into what we would call the plaza space for the neighborhood common area and then the roadway space so obviously you can still have access um, down to the further private place. Um, so materials, what can we do to, uh, to construct this, uh, this plaza space? Um, what we want to do is we want to utilize uh, a different type of uh, pavement surface to differentiate this plaza space here for the uh, common area from the roadway space. So, it, uh, and we can go over, we'll go over some materials in, in, in the next few slides, but some sort of material that, uh, that gives it a, a different look to sort of differentiate um, that location. And then also um, some sort of vertical delineation. As you see right here, it's ballers, but here we're showing some planters, something to, um, to cordon off that, uh, the plaza space. Um, so here are just a few uh, more uh, pavement options that we um, that we thought would be um, a good idea. This location, one is uh, is the colored asphalt. They're actually putting this um, out in uh, City Hall Plaza right now. If you've been around, they have um, they've made an accessible route for um, for, for wheelchairs, and uh, it's it's like a uh, red colored asphalt that they built in the field of brick on City Hall Plaza. So that's one option. Um, Another option is uh, this thermoplastic pattern. It comes down in sheets, and you can get it in patterns that obviously this one looks like a, a brick pattern, uh, fairly easy to maintain, a nice smooth surface. Um, and you can get various uh, types of patterns like that. And also uh, the possibility for uh, custom thermoplastic uh, <coughs> patterns, which are the same type of material, but you can lay it down and you can, um, maybe have some text if it's uh, you know, right like uh, Bartlett Place or whatever. Um, right in the, um, on the ground, or a combination of, of those things. Um, so, and here are just you know some pictures. None of them are necessarily um, the one that we that we would choose, but um, but yeah, just some some planters that would provide that that vertical um, delineation around the plaza space to differentiate it from the from the roadway space. Um, as I mentioned, the drainage, uh, we would maintain a raised curb, you know, with like a six inch reveal around the uh, plaza space. That way the water stays on the roadway and doesn't flow onto the sidewalk and into the adjacent basements and, uh, and that type of thing. Um, accessibility, we make sure that it's accessible to all. We have a, you know, definitely have it so that uh, if someone in a wheelchair or anyone can can access this. Um, it'll be wide enough in between these planters to uh, to get get into that space, and also having this flush driveway so it's easy to uh, traverse in front of the uh, part of the place. Okay, so as far as programming in the space, um, we talked, of, um, we've discussed amongst ourselves and with others about um, potentially providing some sort of seating. And uh, we've gone back and forth as far as whether it be a movable seating that would be there, you know, and then someone comes in and, and takes it in, or a just fixed seating like a bench that's bolted down, and, uh, and something like that. And uh, also landscaping, you know, the planters, what's going in the planters, and then how are the plants going to get watered. So this is sort of where we come to the community and say, uh, and, and look for some sort of partnership. With, uh, with local businesses and local community groups because the Public Works Department, we're good about getting out there and building you something, but we don't have the, the resources necessarily to, um, 
to maintain these things. So if we put out you know, chairs that are gonna be out there, who's gonna take them in at night so they don't get uh, messed up? Or who's gonna, uh, who's gonna water the plants and take care of them if they're dead and, and, all, and all of that type of thing? Um, so those are some of the issues that, uh, that we need to discuss. So anyway, um, as we uh, look in, in the city itself, we have several options um, that are in place, and these not, aren't necessarily what we would do in there, but just some examples of seating on the greenway, and these are, these are movable seating, and they come around and, uh, and they chain them off at night. And then um, there's also some fixed seating, like over in uh, Chinatown, or over by the aquarium, where there's picnic tables, and they're, and they're bolted down. Um, here's an example of um, sort of space uh, that was that was reclaimed. That used to be part of the road of um, Brooklyn, New York, um, where they basically they colored the asphalt to delineate it. They put in some planters. There's a there's a bench over here, and there's some bike racks. So this is the kind of thing. Um, kind of the direction we're looking to go, something to differentiate it from the roadway and, uh, and something, a place where people can, uh, can congregate. So um, after all that, here's a, here's a proposed concept. And um, as you can see here, um, we just, we're showing movable seating right now with some tables and chairs and some planters and uh, some sort of pavement material that, uh, that differentiates that space. Um, this is an approximate cost estimate, um, looking at a grand total, 110,000 plus or minus, depending on exactly what materials are chosen and everything. This is just for the um, initial installation. Um, so, back to what I was saying before, um, the maintenance requirement from abutters. Um, whether we go with if we go with tables and chairs, we need someone to maintain them to make sure that you know that they stay in good condition and also that they get taken in at the appropriate time and everything like that. And then also, um, if we do any sort of green space, uh, any sort of plantings of any type, someone to someone to come out and water the plants essentially and take care of that and pick up trash that gets stuck in there and all that type of thing. Um, so an estimated uh, project timeline. Um, community buy-in, we look at about, you know, one month, um, and then um, we probably take on, uh, have a consultant come up with a, a preliminary design, and we do a review of that, more, uh, more involvement with the uh, community, so that would be about three months, and then uh, we look to advertise and get it approved, that takes three to four months to go through all the city agencies, about a month of construction, and then you're looking total time span, eight or nine months, plus or minus. Um, for this whole process um, starting now. Um, this was just an example. Um, someone else had done a proposal and, and uh, brought it to our attention, um, so we just wanted to acknowledge it. Here they had shown a tree, which we, we're not sure is really feasible due to the underground utilities and everything at, at this location, but certainly um, the, the idea of this concept um, is, is what, we're, what we're looking for. Something to cordon off the space and make it usable for those in the community. And uh, so, I think this is the last slide. So now I'll, uh, I'll open it up for uh, comment and discussion. Go ahead. Hi. We had a meeting at City Hall yes. as the abutters, and I think, I thought some, a lot of the things that we had discussed were, don't seem to be incorporated here. My main concern was we had discussed seating and tables. There's nowhere to put any, so the seating has to be permanent, if at all. And, but we discussed concerns about people loitering. Carla, who owns Terramia, has had people complain about people sitting just in front of the restaurant in the middle of the night, and so yes. she pulls her benches in at night. So I thought we sort of discussed that and agreed that any sort of seating is probably not a good idea because it just encourages people to sit there and make noise, scream, yell, drink, whatever. Number one. Uh -huh. Sorry, but no, they know that. This was just, remember they told you in the meeting that they were going to show the whole presentation again? Oh, okay. This is it. Yeah. They understood that we, we get that. We know we don't want seating there. Oh, so okay. We know that that's not, more than likely not going to happen in this situation. Okay. So it was just so Public Works could show the whole 
passed out all over again. Oh, I, thought, I was expecting like no, a modified no, no. based on that input. Well, Sorry. I mean, and we also wanted to get you know the input yeah. from all the community because yeah. um, if there's things that we can do that you know is mutually or agreeable for most in in, in this in this setting, yeah. um, we don't want to necessarily discount an idea um, if someone if someone chimes in and says I got a good solution for that uh, and that type of thing. I know that we discussed that because it's 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 a tricky balance. Yeah, you know. It's nice to have the seating there, um, but it'd be nice to remove it. But who's going to who's going to do that? Obviously, there's, there's no one um, who seems to have the ability to do such a thing. And then, there's you know, no and then if you had a permanent yeah. seating, um, then you're right. It it it's an ability for people to be there all, all the time. But then, if you have no seating, it's like I don't know. Then you have an area there that you know it's just a, a paved space. Well, I think there's an opportunity, as we discussed, for like some sort of public art or something like mm -hmm. that. My concern is if you put something where people can hang out. I mean, I had one morning somebody like passed out leaning against my front door. That I, you know, it's a concern with mm -hmm. that kind of issue. Mm -hmm. And then the other one that I wanted to raise is, which we also discussed, was vehicle access. Those planters. There's a planter there now today. If you're all familiar with the area. That thing gets knocked around left and right. Okay. So, in, in the north end, trucks and planters don't mean anything unless you put something really yeah, solid yeah. to delineate. Anything that physically. we would put would be, would be um, okay. something to, to delineate in that, in that nature. Yes. How, yes. How about an emergency vehicle? How would they get access down there if the road is only so narrow, like a fire truck? How would it make the turn to get down there if there was ever a fire way down and back? Yep. I mean, that will be taken And if you put a, yeah. something that's permanent that can't be moved, how would the truck get by? Yeah, we'll make sure, we'll run the analysis on it and obviously make sure that anything that we put there would, um, would be conducive. Because it's only to, so wide, and even if you put the sidewalk, it's only so wide of the space, I can't see a truck really making that turn without hitting something going over the sidewalk, just anything at all. Yeah, I mean, they may have to mount a portion of the sidewalk to, to make that turn, but the roadway itself would be the same width as it is further down. So obviously the truck can make it down that section. So it can make it into this section. No, obviously no, we wouldn't no, put anything No, it wouldn't be in. able to make the turn and it can't make well, it all the way down. It, so it would have to stop where it is. So it would need that extra space to, it, to get we in We would there. make sure that it would be able to make the turn in, into, the, into the location. As far as the width, it would be the same width as it is. So the delivery trucks that are in and out of there all day, they all pull the up parmenter? Yeah. And back in. Yeah, you may be able to. Or they that. come straight down yeah, Parmenter. Yeah, so. You're talking about a fire truck, though. I don't think they want to take the time to back up and move in. I think they want to just pull in, like is what happened on Cooper Street. If they had to kind of back up and try to fit their way in there, I think they would have been in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Can a fire truck get down there now? Yeah. You think yes. it could fit all the way down to the Not all the way down to the back, but it can make the turn make to the get turn. as far as it can, yes. Because part of the reason they're doing this is because. The way it's utilized now, or well, the way it's utilized now, is as a, as a, as a neighborhood dumpster. But people park there, and, 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 and we're trying to we're trying to deter people from parking there and leaving their trash there. So hopefully, I understand what you're saying. Since there's a fire last week, yeah. it's, a, it's, it's a legitimate concern. But you have so many people parking in there. If the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if, the, if the box gets pulled now. In the middle of the day, people are pulling their linen trucks in there and everything else. So, so that's you're not what we have meter maids for, and that's what we have police officers for, to tow them out, tow them, get rid of them, tow the cars, tag them and tow them. They tag them, but some of these tow companies, them. it's just it's part of doing, it. unfortunately, I, I, I agree, it's part of doing the business. The 110000 they're going to use to do this, why don't you hire a few extra people to clean the streets and make sure that area stays clean all the time? I just think for $110,000, you're taking all this time to do this small area when there's so much more that can be done with that money. A couple of things on the fire issue. I would hope that you run this by the fire department. Oh, absolutely. Be before yes, you reach a final Yes, design. of course. That, that'll um, definitely be considered. But, yeah. the, but I have a question, which is, do you ever collaborate with the parks department, either for design input uh, and or maintenance. In other words, could this be a joint venture between public works and parks? Um, we collaborate in, in some respects, but um, parks doesn't have the, the, the budget maintenance-wise to take on this either. Um, public works, we don't really deal with um, putting in, I mean, we can put in the, the green space or whatever, but as far as maintenance, we don't, we don't have the means and, and parks doesn't have 
the lim they have limited resources as well. So that's why we look to the community for some sort of help out in the, the, the long The long-term plan for that to, to maintain is um, Work Inc. Work Inc. who does the maintenance of the Greenway. We're gonna pay Work Inc. through the money that the Northern Beautification Committee raises. We're going to have them, and they've been down there to look at how big the space is in the event this gets built or gets built out. Mm -hmm. So Work Inc. What? will get paid through the donations yeah. that the Northern Beautification Committee collects from local businesses and local residents and local landlords, and it'll be part of um, it'll be part of their um, their job to maintain um, to maintain that um, that park. We empty bar barrels and stuff like that. Everything. So. I mean, I'm not going to go off on another subject, but that'll, that'll be the long-term sustainable uh, plan in terms of maintaining. That means the flower beds, everything. All that stuff will, will, will get done. And I think in the meantime, as at Butters, we're all happy to you know, pick trash out of there that gets left and things like that. I mean, we try and do that with the planter that's there now. Well, in general, for the most part, that, that area, I think everyone knows, it's, it's really just residential trash. I mean, it's a pretty good-looking corner. Or intersection of the neighborhood. Um, well, with that, Stephen, you touched on that before. So now what? They're going to put the trash on the sidewalk as opposed to inside? Like, mm -hmm. how is that going to be addressed with the piles of, of mm -hmm. trash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry to keep speaking. I think what, and we discussed this with Commissioner Massaro, I think what needs to happen is we need to get the trucks to go down Bartlett Place so that all the residents can leave trash in front of their buildings, including mm -hmm. ourselves. I live in eighth right there. We wouldn't leave it out front. We would leave it on the side, on the alley side. 98 Salem, um, 100 Salem, everybody just needs to accept the fact that <coughs> trash needs to go in front of your building. It doesn't get to get thrown in some area that is no man's well, I land. I think if right? residents know that, they would, but the problem is that it's not. So if they can right. coordinate but I think once we it, make it nice yeah. and we get the you get capital to come down the alley. Right. That takes care of one part of it, and the other thing is getting it. You know, all the adjoining buildings that now decide that's a dumpster area. We it, we need to like inform them that you've got to put the trash out in front of your building. Period. I also have a question about grading. You mentioned that. I mean, I know it goes back to that building right there. That's a public area, then it turns into private. So when you regrade everything, uh, are you in talks with whoever owns that private way to kind of? Right now we have a drainage issue where, I mean, we get all of that that just piles up in the back. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that refinishing it, what is that, 30 feet, you know, it's only going to increase. So is there any talks with the person um, who owns the back to maybe refinish the whole thing and drain it so that? We can't um, do any work on the, on the private section. So all we can do is maintain the public section and, and we will make it so it does not drain, our public section will not drain onto the, onto the private section. I think that's owned by half the street owns by each property line, right? Mm -hmm. Is that typically the way? Yeah, it's yeah. it's generally the the abutters um, right. of, of it. Own, but I know there's are a responsible for a portion. Yeah. Of there's a big drainage grate at the very end. Yes. that's right now is raised too high, so there's like a little right. lake that sits there at the end. Is that something that the city would be responsible for lowering that? Um, well, it's not. It's it's in the private way. Um, so it will be on most likely the responsibility of the butters and working with uh, perhaps the water and sewer commission and with the drainage. But yeah, our, our, our limits of work, because we're restricted to the public way, would end you know, at that line. Yeah, so, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I used to work the laundry mat there on the corner. I'd watch during storms. Water comes down Parmenta, and there's a storm drain right in front of Terramia. Um, that does nothing because the water just goes straight from down Parmenter to straight down the alley. So if you did the curb along along Salem Street, it would actually make the storm, storm drain uh, do its job, which would help with the problem with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other? Uh, Whatever you do, for 35 years, we've had all the water from Salem Street and Parman are going down to that Bartlett place to the end. And we clean it, and we disinfect it, and we sweep it, and we shovel up the trash. The city's never lifted a finger down there. 
done in the you, private. If you're going to do something, you've got to stop all the public water from going down to the private. Correct. Water, it, seems to me. it will be graded as such. So go along with us. What are you going to do with the public portion of Bartlett Place? The public portion of Bartlett. Of the fire lane. Of this section. The fire lane access. Yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah. So all of this section that's in the public space will all will all drain into the public space. We may have to build some sort of catch basin in the public space. You're yeah. saying all the, the street that goes all the way to the end is, is a butters right. only? That's not all city owned, even the street part of it? Correct. It's a private. It's it's same, with, same with noise. Not noise. Yeah, noise. Noise and ball. That's not a fire like that. I mean, what was that? That's a private way. They're all yeah. private. Yeah, it's yeah. private ways. Yeah. At the face of the building. Right. The start but of not the building. street no, as well. The private way is at the face of Back. The, whole, the entire street is, is private. It's on, It's a uh, square right. box. The city owns it. It's right. a rectangle which the city owns. Yes. Well, that's what he's saying. To the faces of all the buildings. Go back to the private public. So if you, actually, if you go back to the, the re, that third or fourth slide. Yeah, I'll, I'll go over it again. Wait, stop. Just if you go to the acceptance plan, it right, kind of shows it all right there. Yeah, so right here. We're looking at just this wide section is the public space. Anything where it gets narrow beyond that is, is private. Good luck with that. Yeah. Isn't there some way to co coordinate like with the private owners and the city to somehow get together and complete the whole thing? I think it's going to kind of look, I mean, it's going to look nice in that one area and then you look at the rest of the street and the sidewalk is going to be all broken up and the street is the way it is. I mean, isn't there some way? We need to, to get every, complete every, this whole thing. We need to get every landlord. I mean, it's really the responsibility of the landlords on top of the place to all get together. And if they want to repave, they they basically get a bill and they divide it by five business um, property owners or four. Now. It, it happens all over the city in Charlestown. We have a, a similar situation right now, mm -hmm. and uh, there's one guy willing to do it, and there's two other property owners that don't want to be bothered. It's like I don't want, I don't want, I can't handle the expense right now. Um, Auburn, I think Auburn Place off of Auburn Street in Charlestown. So. It's all based on all the all the property owners on by the place saying, hey, this is what we're gonna do. Like Baldwin Place, for instance, they don't even plow Baldwin Place. And if, if I'm not saying they don't, you know, Paparasso, we all know him, 98 years old, um, calls every year there's a big snowstorm because he's always paranoid that emergency vehicles can't get down there. And, and you know, Sal usually will send one of the public works trucks in or one of the front end loaders in to, to take, the, um, take the, the, the snow off, but you know, my experience with public, public as, as, as opposed to private ways is, you know, the people who live on private ways, when there's a snowstorm or when, you know, something not so pleasant is happening, they'll call the city, but they can park their cars on a private way. No one gets tickets on Baldwin Place. They park. It's their own parking lot. You know, they have the luxury of having their they own get car. They tickets over there, though. If they, they park. Not if they parked, not if they drove down to Bartlett Place and, and parked on the bottom of the street, they wouldn't. Yeah, they well, do. They do. It's, it's, it's a fire. It's a fire. Baldwin Place, for instance, you can park. They All the owners on that street can park um, on the sidewalk, in the street, and there's no enforcement. You know, what is place is a and it should be an option at least place. to give them the option to do We that. It's private. We tarred the entire street. Yes, they did. Yeah. And we all paid for it. Where is it? Noise, Noise. Place. All the owners paid to have that done. I mean, I, don't you think if the city's starting this project, it would be worth a shot to at least um, send I out letters be. to um, yeah. see We can send it, but then they'd have to hire their own contractor. They do their, they get their own. Could you leverage the same city contractor? I mean, have them like what if they provide pay? an estimate? Yeah. And then at um, least we could. And then you could the contractors out there doing work, you can, you, I mean, you can grab them and say, hey, how much to take it down the rest of the street? Right. You, do we even know who would be doing? We don't even know. We don't even know. This is still very conceptual at this point, obviously. Uh, but yeah, that would be still on the abutters. Uh, it, it would be on the abutters to pay for that work. I mean, I can work with Stephen as soon as we know or somebody. I can, get the, I can get a list of gets the contract, I can get them and try and contact the landlords. <laughs> Getting back to just the space in particular, um, I mean, I understand the pros and cons for, for seating and, and not seating. And, uh, you know, I, I see the benefits and, and conflicts with each, but uh, if we're leaning towards not having any seating, has there been any discussion as to like maybe some kind of water feature or something? I mean, that nobody will stand in water. 
Um, water features are tricky. They're expensive, um, and you got to have, um, you know, you have to have plumbing going to it and everything. Right. Very difficult, you know, maintaining um, has to be maintained. So um, it's, too it's, it's 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 likely that that would be too costly. Um, so again, uh, public art is certainly an option. I don't know if there is uh, any interest in public art. If it's kind of available, um, but that's something that we can certainly incorporate um, into the space. And um, I mean, I guess I'm getting the general consensus that the that the seating is is off the table from this community. For, well, I would say permanent seating would, would, wouldn't be too popular due to the fact that people live in Lava Place and live on Salem Street. And if you need permanent seating or if you, uh, you know, um, have um, a, 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 an area where people can congregate and loiter in this neighborhood, uh, it, it's probably going to get taken advantage of. I mean, I would say that if, if this happens, you, you know, we can, we can, we could, uh, do it without the outdoor seating or without seating or a table or whatever it is, and then you know down the road we can phase it in. You know, I mean, you know, there's mm -hmm. you know there's business owners there that might be interested in, 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 in the um, outdoor seating period starts like from April to October, and you know we have someone a couple of benches, one a couple of benches, right? something. Yeah. Like well, mm -hmm. like even like uh, the Let restaurant work. I had um, two out. benches bolted to in front of Terramia. You know, they were there permanently, and I had. Um, uh, neighbors complaining to me that across the street that you know the noise people would just be sitting on the bench late into the early morning three four five in the morning making noise kids drums whatever and so I am so maybe them we, and started maybe we, taking but, but them in. temporary now right so well no I, I she got rid of them. I well yeah they, those ended up breaking and I just bought new ones and now oh, I right. take them in every night take, well, so because I've had people complain and ask me if I would do that so, so I, you know, we could lock them up like the greenway yeah. but that's yeah. that's down the road I, I think what they're trying to do is, is, is create something a little more pleasant than what exists there now my thing is too is that I mean people trash goes out on what Monday morning it gets picked up well on Friday night people are already taking it. I was I see this I send Stephen pictures all the time of all the trash that's there people start taking trash out Friday night and they leave it right in front of that plant right that's there. you can't do this until you address yeah. that problem no but so, so what, I'm, what I'm saying regarding that is that I mean I would like signs to be put up maybe to the building that trash people will get fined for the trash yeah. being brought here. So things that work. can work uh, at, the, at the same time. There's, there's an operations um, and outreach disgusting. about the, about the trash, and then there's this project where we're where, where, where involved as far as what to do with this space. Um, and yeah. Well, it's, the other thing that we didn't really talk about much is lighting. Mm -hmm. I think it would be important to have as well lit that area as well lit as possible again to avoid you know bring attention to the area I mean also avoid you know I, I think lighting is key <laughs> yeah uh, right now there exists uh, there is a light pole um, right here but um, we can certainly look at um, at some other options uh, it's pretty dim there and I, I mean it would be nice if, if you're going to make it something nice to see if what can be done from a lighting standpoint to highlight it and, both bring attention to it from a beauty standpoint, but also deter, you know, inappropriate use of it. I guess. Yep. You know what? To the to the, to the trash part of it, you know, we, you know what? You know what we can do is maybe we can have code enforcement kind of. I don't know. Maybe we can have them stake it out. Or something. I mean, <laughs> it is a problem. I mean, yeah. walk by the place and they walk around a lot, but. Um, Maybe, maybe they can, if we kind of have an idea, if you're telling me that Friday night or, or Saturday, I'm telling maybe you. they can just kind of hang Friday. around there. Or maybe Friday night, it was, it was out there Friday night during St. Anthony's oh, Feast okay. all weekend. It's all spun out of the weekend. That's a special weekend, though, because no, but it's it's always, perfect, it's I know that was a moving yeah. weekend. That's not it a typical always, weekend, yeah. but it's always. It was trash, trash. It was household trash. It wasn't trash. trash. It wasn't trash. It wasn't well, trash. I spoke with a couple of Pete kids that did it, and they said that their landlord told them not to leave their trash in front of their building to bring the trash to that area. Because they won't pick it up. It's an easy area. No, you know, it's a pleasant to look at it's, now. It's fixed up in front of the building. Area building area down the street. Dump, 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 dump. No, it's not. Nice. People down Salem Street are leaving their trash there. Right, right. Yeah, yeah that can't be from two or three buildings. That's that's gonna that's gonna be from. And the, the plants of that stairs is destroyed. Mm -hmm.
Just to yeah. comment on the seating issue, um, uh, we live at um, on Union Street with and our home abuts the uh, Prado, and there's tons of seating in there. Um, generally, I mean, so it's a little different because it's the main through fair. There's lots of people walking. We do have a good number of people walking to the Prado at night, getting to their homes. It's not, it's not terrible, the noise. I mean, there's occasional um, loitering and loud noises, but um, as an abutter, it's, it's not that bad. Uh, if it's well, again, it's, it's, you know, dark space where it's easy for people to kind of hide. So even with that, there's not a lot. There is some, not extraordinary, not to make me want to move, but, um, but. Yeah, the, the reason it's a separate issue is because the police uh, on, are on the Parado all the time, as well as a lot of the parks. They're in there making sure that no kids are in there, because that was at one of our meetings, that was one of our bigger issues. Right. About kids yeah. hanging in, you know, the Nazaro, the Parado, and stuff like that. I think it's more conspicuous. Well, than the what would it yeah. be if you if you kind of gave it a, like a nice a gated enough. off, not yeah. you know yeah. gate with a little access, uh, and at night if they if they can close, if they're gonna those people that take care of the greenway, they shut it down at like ten thirty, they put the seats away. They lock it. They do that. It can lock it up at night. You know, at least uh, like some kind of you know gate, nothing crazy, just a fancy, you not know, an eyesore type of gate. You know. Um, yeah, it's just. Um, it's an issue of getting someone to be responsible for that. Like, you can take on responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I understand it's an eyesore, but you have to understand that a lot of even businesses on Salem Street can't have planted in front of their door because they're destroyed every single night by whatever comes up along that way because it's a major route going to either people coming off the train or going to the train at home. And the plant that's there now is destroyed. It's completely, they pull the, the things out, they pull their trash in it, they move it from the, there to the middle of the street and people have to come and move it back. It's ridiculous what goes on. And just putting more planters there and then having Seaton locked up, I just, they, look at what they did. They smashed all the cars coming up Salem Street and one of the businesses, they threw one of the planter things right through their window. I mean, I just. I don't think the planters, they're gonna, they're gonna the planter that's there they're now, gonna yeah, but I, I don't think it, I don't think it. it, it the planter that's these there planters now aren't is gonna supposed be to be a heavy. It's not gonna be movable yeah. out yeah. the planters. Yeah, that's, that's that but they, they, they ripped gonna, the plant right out was what I'm saying. I, no, the I understand along the, the street. It's so just. Vandalism to the plants, that, that's something that's, you know, that's tricky to deal with. As far as the planters being secured in the ground, that would not be an issue. No, I, I had um, planters in front, three planters, two in front of the Terramia, one on the side. I took them off this season because last season paid all this money to have D at 1-800-Flowers plant them, and every day they'd be pulling out plants, dirt all over the street, I'm redoing it. Now, I just, too I had enough. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. So I just you took them off. roses with thorns on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poisonous plants. Yeah, right. Poison ivy. But you want to make something yeah. nice. That's I think what thing. people yeah. are saying, you do want to, and I get that, we want to make something nice. It's this balance, and I understand right. all, all, yeah. the, all the uh, issues that come up. You know, you want, it'd be nice to have people sit there, but then they're going to sit there at the wrong time. It'd be nice to have plants, but then, yeah, so it's, it's tricky. So that's why we're here, so we want to hear. We have to say maybe there's a solution that we can sort of come in and, and meet in the middle somewhere where it's like, oh, we, we have this, this, and it's only a few plants, and that less, less, what if less you just put a, a half a sidewalk or something so cars can't park there anymore, like extend the sidewalk out just enough so cars and trucks can't park there? Oh, we're definitely going to do that. That's happening. But we want to do something special for the space. We don't want it to just be an asphalt space and walk away. I think the city deserves to give more back to this neighborhood. I wish and I, and I hope that you guys will want something. Let's move the city of Yeah, yes. The street itself ain't going to be fixed. The public portion of the street will be fixed. Oh, that's it. The rest with the house. So that just, just this front, the front of the space. It's a private, it's a private way. And it's 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 private in the, in the back. So in other words, they don't do nothing. They don't plow. The hostage used to go to their head, not fix the front. Because it's a private way. But they pay a ton of tax and they'll come. 
because they pay um, taxes. But they don't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't fix it. But they pay a property tax, but, and I, am, I, I know what you're saying, but it's a, it's a private way. So they're going to pay the door? Yeah. Yes. So they'll make that trade, and the rest will be a job. Well, the, it, it's a private way. If the city does work to it and something happens, the city's liable, you know, this falls on the city for responsibility. It's I think one of the things that made a lot of sense that we discussed was the phased approach, you know, figure out the vehicle issue, right? Yeah. I think there's, you guys have mentioned a couple of like foundations where art might be available. Yeah. I don't know if like anything was available immediately or there's a potential of something be available in the future. Obviously you'd want to be north end appropriate. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, like NASA astronaut or something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But also, one of the things that I thought was cool that you showed at the beginning was the custom, I don't know what you call them, appliques or whatever. You yeah, know, so you can have something plastic, like yeah. the city of Boston or North End Lee, you know, something as kind of the centerpiece, at least, you know, if a piece of art comes available in two to five years from now, we could replace that. But as a starting, relatively inexpensive option, something like that would probably look pretty cool. Combined with the planters, maybe you can do like a street sign with like all the restaurant names pointing which way they are. Is it a big intersection? Something. Else? That's neat. <laughs> what? Okay. We're gonna ask them to help out. They can't put that in on some of the Kind of like what are they doing here in street? They have like all the different yeah. places in Italy. Yeah, yeah. that looks awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, something like that. Something kind of something Someone like that. just placed that there. That's not something know, that they would do. Excuse me, you should know that. But people place the same thing with planches on the street. People place street that's, furniture you can't all put the plants on the street. Scene. You I mean, keep saying things could be done, but the things you're talking about are done illegally. Put a plant on a sidewalk is illegal. I you can't do that. Putting a sign like that say on that on that private thing is illegal. It's so why I'm are you talking by the way? I'm saying, should we sit there and let it look like urban blight for the next that 20 years? That doesn't mean you provide free advertisement for somebody. Yeah, right. But when we need money from the businesses, yeah. they give us 500 a pop, don't they? When Little League needs money, where do we go? But that's got nothing to yes, do with most public property. Does free advertising. We should be able to advertise. Stephen, it has nothing to do with public property. You can't advertise on public right. property. Whatever. So we won't advertise on public property. All right. Uh -huh. See, it's nothing personal. Uh, it's the law. Saying. You can't do what y'all are trying if to do. That's the law. Then there's a lot of laws that are broken all over the place. Uh, we you know, we, we, put, we put, I mean, we have to. Please, we want to talk. Listen, we're going to sit here and debate. If the law's now. being broken, it's your office, yeah. not important. I know. I know. It's me. Then we're not done. All right. I think maybe we're in agree agreement here, um, I hope, that uh, that we can come back with some sort of um, approach, taking into things we considered about the, about the seating and everything, give you some sort of space there. Um, we can certainly pursue a, uh, a public art um, option and, and uh, see if there's anything available or if someone can work with it. And, uh, we, don't have we don't have anything? No. Where would you yeah. look for art? Man? Would you go like an art college and ask and, 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 uh, and ask, around, ask, ask students to build something, to design something for that? Uh, well, the city has this thing called uh, the Brown Fund, where they issue funding towards um, towards public art. Um, I don't know if there's anything in that either. Um, certainly, Nicole's looked into it. Um, we can look at other options. I don't know if you guys know of anything, and we're open to suggestions. Um, but yeah, um, it's 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 an option that we we like to still somehow consider. Like an yeah. actual project to have a bunch of artists yeah. come up with ideas. You know? Yeah, definitely. Sounds what North End appropriate, I think. Yeah. Right? What right. about an Christmas tree? Yeah. We could decorate it in the winter for Christmas time. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a it's certainly a space that will be available. Yeah. So. Um, That's nice. You know, the Scotia has sent us a tree. No, putting it in the Scotia has sent us a tree. It might not be feasible to have a tree in there due to all the underground utilities and everything. There's drain lines and all that stuff underneath. And also, yeah, that is a that is a maintenance issue as well. And so you know, if you plant a tree, it's going to be small, and it's likely to get broken and everything. So 
Yeah, they can't plant them. But would they put the garbage? I'm talking about plants in a big tree. Yeah. Not a huge tree, but I mean, it's, it's just difficult to plant backyard. like a large tree like that and have the survival rate is, is very <laughs> slim. You have to plant like a sapling, and then you know, 50 years later, then you have a tree. That you well, I can have my landscape to do it. He just planted me a big, huge Christmas tree. Yeah, <laughs> no problem. It's tough in a city environment with the, with the roots light. Are gonna the roots are going to affect your cellar. The roots are going to affect your cellar. Yeah, the other thing is all the underground utilities. Mark, really Mark, Mark will use his view of my mental tree. But if you maintain, <laughs> if you maintain the tree and keep it, yeah, the the root. The root, it doesn't grow. The roots don't grow. Yeah, yeah if you keep pruning, the, pruning the roots, the roots don't grow. Yeah, but I mean, they don't get you because it's not supporting a big, huge yeah. tree. The bigger the tree, the more. So the trash, with the trash in there, even if the, the, the people that live in those buildings put it in front of their buildings? No. There's no way a truck's gonna, the garbage truck's gonna go down there. The garbage guys are gonna have to go down there. No, but they have smaller trucks. Well, they do well, that. In the Vermont same. building, they have a smaller truck that they'll send down there. Listen, yeah, for 18 absolutely. years, well, how long have you been there? Now? You said they used to go do that. How long have you been there? Four. Four yeah. years? All right, so for almost like, what, 15, 16 years, I've owned Termia almost 20 years now. Um, we used to park cars in there, and there was never a trash issue. The trash, everybody left their trash down the um, Bartlett Way in front of their own doors, and the trash company used to come, go down the street, maybe they walked it, whatever, and they no, used to... No, they went down with the truck. Well, they, well, however they did it, but they still put their trash out in front of their own yeah. doors. So the landlords just don't want this. Yeah. They just go down, they get the trash. Now that the cars aren't there, there's more trash. Yeah, but it's changed since the cars aren't there. There's a lot more. They just walk down and pick up the trash. I mean, they what? get. Capital, the guys in Capital, they get paid to pick up the trash. Well, they should walk saying. down the street. People, yeah. Nick, people, before they had this big open space, people put the trash in front of their doors because there was no but big open space. It's not their fault if the trash isn't put in front of their door. They, they're not going to say anything. For them, it's convenient for right. the trash to be yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, we had no issues with Talk about not working. <laughs> I think the simpler, the simpler, the better. Simpler. Even like I like, I like fencing it off and like uh, uh, having those uh, the tables and couple. Of, the tables cause a lot of. Uh, Tables and chairs bring trash, trash brings rats, and uh, at least the better, I think. A couple of benches, I would suggest. You know, a little tree or something. Anyone else? Whatever you do, when you stop the water from Salem Street, Carmel <laughs> Street, and going down that Bartlett Place, it's been a problem for decades. It's not the water that's generated from the area that you want to work on, but from all of Salem Street, all of Harmony Street, and where your public ways. works, you've got to stop that water. Because if it comes down the private way, then we can't, de we can't ask you to help us on the private way because it's private. Right. And we're getting the water from all the public ways. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's the issue that we're going to. I think where they're, that's the issue we're working on. That's what we're going to. Where they're repaving Salem anyway, I would think that they would engineer it to have the right Show me the plan, and I'll believe it. For 35 years, we've been flooded at the bottom yeah, of the bottom no, of the place. Do you have any idea the timetable? Um, well, as I said, um, uh, yeah. when did it start? I, well, the total thing, the total process, eight or nine months, but again, now we gotta, we're going to go back and... Uh, no, I mean, when does the pig on the sales book start? Because now we're including this in. Um, this is a separate project from But the, you're going to do it when they do the paving of Salem Street, you so. No. You're not? No, this is a separate project. Okay. I just said that we were, we're, the city is going to be paving uh, Salem Street as a separate project. So, so this project is already in the works, there's nothing... nothing so you're doing phase one. Most likely after. After? We, yeah. You don't know when that time frame is. Well, the, the time frame is pending all these discussions and whether we get public art and whether everybody agrees that we want um, this type of thing. The paving? I don't know the exact schedule of the paving. It'll be after the paving. I don't know when the paving is coming. Who else could we put there? Yeah. Are you saying that, that this is already in the works? What is that? This project is already in the works. something else that we are um, we're eyeing this area for something to do. We're definitely 
closing off this and having the opening is, is going to get done one way or another. What we do with this space is up to um, the results of, of these meetings. A simple thing, if you could show um, that first slide I showed you, is, is essentially this, where we, where we make that driveway opening and cordon off this, this area somehow. But, um, but we'd like to do something better. We have funds to do this. The funds are approved, so we're looking to, to you know, do something, put a better pavement material in there that looks better, um, put some, some sort of planters or something. It's a good beginning. Anyway, the so thing is, if we do this, then we're not going to come back, you know, necessarily. So it'd be nice to, to put something in there that's going to that's going to make an impact. Since the city's looking at this, the mayor's interested in it, our commissioner is interested in it. We want to do something that looks nice for the community, as opposed to the bear. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's stuff to be considered. Again, you know, you got to take into account the maintenance. You know, if people are going to come and destroy it. Yeah. yeah, maybe there's some sort of plants that are less likely to get Do you have architecture uh, sample drawings or anything? Do you have any ideas that are on the table? So this is like you're looking at. Yeah. This is what we have so far. So we'll come back. Yeah, we'll come back. We'll come back. Yeah. And then we'll have a follow-up meeting. Yeah. Will there be the yeah. next at the next meeting ideas or yeah. ideas? Yeah, we'll have a follow-up meeting. We'll just take all these ideas into account. We'll follow up. We'll bring some back out. Um, we'll reach out to the community and everything. I would just say just to follow up.